I give up. I'm Lily Karas, and this is The Fearless Designer. When I graduated from college and went to get my first job, I realized that I had gotten a degree in something I was really interested in studying, but didn't enjoy doing. So all of a sudden, I found myself doing what felt like it was impossible. I had to find a job that I was actually qualified for, and I liked to do. Oh, and I had to be able to live on the salary, too. And this led me to design. This wasn't totally out of the blue. I had been doing interior design as my part-time job during school. And really, if I think about it, I was probably doing it since I was five, pushing around my bedroom furniture in our little New York City apartment. And every day since then. I think I've been a frustrated architect this whole time. Does Lego count? I started out in design doing beach houses in Florida daydreaming of a day that my business would get big enough that I could pick and choose any projects that I really wanted to do. Fast forward 20 years. I had clients across the country. worked for HGTV and said no to more projects than I said yes to. And I hated it. I had to become a chameleon. I could keep my artistic standards by maintaining a certain level of taste, but the style the style that had to be all the clients. <sighs> I had no artistic freedom. It would be like telling a painter what colors to use, what subject to paint. Duck? I don't want to paint a duck. Sure, they could still use their artistic ability to figure out how to execute it, how to still make it beautiful, but they could never paint what was in their soul. That's where I was. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna... I think, I think I can find it. What, you want my colors? Well, I need, but I need brown. And the blues? How am I gonna paint water? I can't just paint ducks with these three colors. Are you kidding me? The red? J just yellow. I have to paint a yellow duck. <sighs> so once again, I had to figure out the impossible. Find a job that would give me full artistic freedom and yet make a living. Since my daydreams were all about designing houses, building them, fixing and changing them, pouring out all my ideas and plans that I had amassed over 20 years of working on other people's projects and building and rebuilding houses with the eye that only a woman, a mother, and a designer could have for the way we live in them, for how our spaces make us feel. So I would buy, design, and build or rebuild my own houses from now on. Mm, this isn't a house, it's a sculpture. I don't have to paint the duck anymore? It's terrific! <gasps> and I get all my colors back? And the brushes too? That is, until I remembered that I no longer had a client size budget to work with. What? You want money? Oh, how much is all of this going to cost? Whoa! I'm going to have to put some of this stuff back. Uh, how about I just take these three? Instead, I would have my own tiny purse. And what's worse... This is all that I have. My paycheck weighed Wait, in no. the balance. If I overspent, I wouldn't make any money. It's not everything I hope for, but it's good enough. And I can paint anything I want to. So this will be the story of one designer who uses 
every bit of her experience, knowledge, and creativity to pull out all the stops and make this house phenomenal on a not-so-phenomenal budget. Next time, we will tour the house that took the better part of a year to find. See the before tour, and I'll show you how to add usable square footage to a house without putting an addition on it. I'm Lily Karras. Join me next time on The Fearless Designer. Bye!